Hi, my name is Michael James, and my friends call me the Grape Meister. I've been growing grapes and making wine for a number of years, and in this video series, I'd like to share those experiences with you. In this video, I'm going to briefly cover the following material. Why yeasts are necessary, the role that yeast plays in winemaking, yeast and its impact on the final flavor of your wine, pairing the proper yeast with the proper wine, and also, finally, an overview of the most popular yeasts that are used in winemaking. Even with the choicest grapes, there's no guarantee that you can produce the best wine. The reason? Yeasts play a critical part in the fermentation process. It's a basic element of winemaking. To produce great wine, you have to know about yeast and how it impacts the final product. This is because yeasts are responsible for giving a unique flavor, taste, and aroma to the finest wines of Europe, California, Australia, Chile, and other places around the globe. If you're a new winemaker, you ought to familiarize yourself with the different types of yeasts available for the winemaking process. Basically, the fermentation process is a very simple chemical reaction that takes place in the absence of oxygen. In the presence of yeast, the sugar molecules are converted to carbon dioxide and alcohol. That's why the fermenting wine is actually bubbling. It's the CO2 being released that is the byproduct of fermentation. In a previous video on basic winemaking, we discussed using a glass carboy with an airlock that allows the CO2 to escape while preventing air from entering the vessel. In winemaking, oxidation is a no-no. One of the most important factors in the final flavor of the wine that you want to achieve is the type of winemaking yeast that you use. In a recent poll, the average number of yeast used to obtain the signature hint and taste of a particular wine can be up to six varieties. The big problem is that there are hundreds of yeasts available for winemaking. Because of this, I'd recommend using a yeast that is paired with a type of wine that you want to produce. There are yeast for white wine production or red wine production, and you should start with these as benchmarks. After a few batches, you can start to experiment with additional yeast to fine-tune your signature vintage wine's ultimate flavor. For example, there's yeast that are used chiefly to create white wine or red wine, while others are used primarily for creating sparkling wine. I actually have obtained my basic knowledge of yeast strains and the wine that they're paired with at sites such as uh, winemaking.jackkeller.net. Now, let's get started on the uh, six common types of winemaking yeast. The most common of all is the Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is preferred by people who make wine at home. This particular yeast is also used in bread making, by the way. It's typically utilized for primary fermentation. There are two basic types of fermentation. Primary fermentation is the initial fermentation that grape juice passes through. Some wines only utilize primary fermentation. Secondary fermentation is a process that is assisted with a second addition of yeast to the young wine. I'm sure you're familiar with wines that utilize secondary fermentation. All sparkling wines such as champagne are wines that utilize this second fermentation and it's responsible for the bubbles or fizz of that wine. That is because the second fermentation happens in the bottle and the CO2 is not able to escape, hence the final product. For those of you who are interested in making sparkling wines, for example, you should use Saccharomyces cerevisiae for the first fermentation process and then add another type of yeast for the second fermentation until you come up with a great tasting sparkling beverage. Saccharomyces cerevisiae actually has other subvarieties. Saccharomyces cerevisiae varbanus is known as floor yeast and it is used in making most sherries as well as some champagne wines. Pasteur Champagne is the second most common yeast strain used in white wine making, but not champagne production. It's used in some sparkling wine production because of its quick fermentation characteristics. Another yeast is Pasteur Red, and it's used in the making of Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, and Zinfandel wines, and other wines that have very full bodies. Pasteur White is usually the yeast that is used for stainless steel vats, and that limits it somewhat to many of the white mines. Prise de Mousse is a steady, low-former yeast that is very good for barrel fermentation. Prise de Mousse is a good sparkling wine secondary fermenter. It is a yeast that is used not only for grape wine production, but in the production of apple, cranberry, and cherry wines, it is usually available in any winemaking supply store or online. 
Epernay too is used for bottle fermentation because of its tolerance of low temperatures and slow effect and it's also used for primary fermentation of still white wines such as Chardonnays. California Champagne yeast this strain is used primarily for secondary fermentation of sparkling wines. It is from the California district of France and its name has led to some confusion in winemaking circles. Montrachet is one of the most popular yeasts for wine production and it is used for both red and white wine production. Chardonnay is one of the white wines that it works well with. It's not particularly a very good match for uh, wines that have a very high sugar level content. Uh, Alsmannschelsen is a German yeast strain used for Pinot Noir, Zinvendel, and it also adds a very spicy characteristic to the final wine product. These are the most popular varieties used in home winemaking, but there are many, many more available. If you search the internet, you can find dozens of sites with detailed information on yeasts. Most winemaking supply stores can be very helpful in assisting you with recommendations depending on the variety of grape that you're trying to use. I want to wish you good luck with your winemaking effort, and I'll see you in the next video. For a free 10-part mini course on how to grow grapes and making your own wine, go to my website, www.totalwinesystem.com. Really, it's free. Why wait? Do it now.